Okay, this one I would like you to try on your own hand first. Okay, if you look at the hand here, if you look at this joint, you just move it around a little bit and you will see that it moves in surprising directions. Like for instance, I can go a little bit here and there. This one would be the classical movement we're thinking of first, but I can actually also turn it a little bit. Slight rotation, that's what you would need to open a jar or something. And I'm always thinking about stimulating those receptors here. Okay? And go back and forth. Can also again feel for muscles and bones. Actually, you might feel the tendons or ligaments here, but that doesn't matter. Okay. And if you look at this joint up here, you can see I can even pull it apart the tiniest little bit or push it back in. And this is what we will do today. It's a distinction in between an easily movable free joint and a joint that's bearing weight. Okay? If I put my hand to standing, now it's bearing weight. This joint is closed. I can still move the hand, but it's quite a different thing from moving it freely. And the child has to know that distinction. Also, it's a very special feeling you usually don't get when you're lying on the floor, rolling around. You only start to get it when you start pushing. So this is a preparation for weight bearing. And I'm gently pushing in here just to the point where I feel, okay, there I have a contact through the skeleton into the next joint. Now, if I push any harder, it won't help. I'll just push the hand away. Just the idea of closing this joint. And if you have children that have, for instance, hands or arms that are bent like this, I'm always working directly into the next joint, so I wouldn't be pushing from here. Then the child would ha use more muscular tension to keep this joint straight. So always into the next joint, but I can also come from here and push into this joint. This is the idea. We'll take our child, put him down. Okay, and make him comfortable again. Okay, here you go. Again, the rollers under the feet. You could actually do that in any position. We'll do it in lying. And maybe give this one a support here under the arch of the back. Looks strange, is very comfortable for many children. So, we begin by waking the body up a little bit. If you're lying on a very soft surface, you could try this one again. Always very important here, you feel the ridges of the pelvic bone. This one, 
this one, this one. Very good thing to push are the heels. And also with tiny rotational movements. Okay. And then you try exactly the same thing, closing the joints. So now I'm going for the elbow joint. Just close it, press a tiny bit and release. And look for easy movements. Maybe we'll start looking for easy movements first. If the elbow doesn't bend, go for the shoulder and just go where it's really free. The, the range doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be a big movement. It has to be an easy movement. Okay, move it and push it in and hold it a little bit. Move it. You could also pull. You're pulling on the scapula right now, actually. But this is an interesting, interesting thing. You could, um, a body can resist if it's being pulled. Actually, it will resist if it's being pulled. You cannot really resist this pushing. Okay? If the next joint reacts, like if you can see the shoulder blade is going down here and you get a little bit of movement in the neck, that's fine, but you don't have to go to anywhere where it's unpleasant for the child. Okay? And then the free movement again. Here. Very easy. I'm actually trying to touch the child as little as possible here. Okay? And push. Do that with the other arm as well. And then we go down to the legs. Now, I'll take that out for a moment to show you what we're doing this for. So, if a child starts to push into the floor for, let's say, an advanced turning around, not just flopping to the side, but pushing with the leg and turning the pelvis in, twisting movement, what you need is stability from here to there, but at the same time an open joint in the hip. And getting this distinction is really important. And this would also have to be free in a rotation. Okay? Try to get the foot to standing. If the leg doesn't bend, you could also just gently work into the hip joint for a beginning. Or if there's a spasticity, actually, it's not always at the same strength. So usually there comes a time. I'm, I'm here, I'm waiting until the spasticity is abating a bit and then I bend. Or I can move the pelvis a bit and then I bend. So if it's possible, get the leg to standing. And then I can push either into the hip joint. Be careful if you know that there is pain in the hip joint, of course. Into the hip joint or into the foot. Into the hip joint. Into the foot. And then a free movement again.
and repeat it a few times. You want to get that idea that just if I push any farther now, it will not be this joint, but it goes right into the skeleton. Okay? And finally, you could push into this foot. I'm pulling the leg a little bit here to get the knee over the foot and gently open this one. This is actually what prepares the foot for standing in a normal child development. And then, of course, do the other side. <laughs>